you what, if that music doesn't get you pumped, excited, jazzed to be here, then you need a defibrillator at your side, bedside, chair side, and even couch side. Good <laughs> afternoon. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show on WBLZsports.com. Good afternoon, everybody. Look, I have elements surrounding me right about now. I really do. And when I think of the type of elements that surround me, you can probably attest to, you know what, I got elements all around me. Well, I have lots of wind, so forgive me in advance, just in case there's any technical malfunctions, so I don't have to say it during the halftime of the show. Look, good afternoon, I'm your host, Rudy Reyes, on the Rude Dog Show. Look, I appreciate you tuning in today. Uh, the feeling of Friday. Everybody has that Friday feeling. Some more than, well, others, and a way to start the weekend. My next guest can tell you that it's another day closer to draft day. However, for fans across the country, it's one day closer to not only the NFL Regional Combine, but the 2017 NFL Draft across the United States. People are really looking forward to getting not only the best, the thrill, of the 2017 NFL Draft. And look, unless you went to the East-West Shrine game, Packer Jackson State. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. It's great to see you. Yeah, man. Well, hey, thanks for coming on. I do appreciate it. Thanks for taking your time out. I know it was short notice, but you know what? Sometimes that's what happens. If an NFL team wants to call you, you'd say, well, you know what? I'll get back to you. No, you jump on a plane with your baggage in tow, waiting to climb on the plane to get to your destination. This yes, guy, <laughs> this guy is solid, ladies and gentlemen. This guy is, he's, he's not only large-minded, but he's also large physically and very talented athletically. And when I say he's a six foot one, 240 pounder, while he played at Jackson State, I mean that literally. This guy reminds me of at least four different players that are defensive end pass rushers, not only in the NFL, but guys who have certainly played in the past. And we seem to have technical problems here, but I'm going to continue rolling through it. Hopefully, he'll give me a call right back. That was Javancy Jones, linebacker, Jackson State. He knows what it's like to not only sack, but tackle for loss. He's had many chances uh, at, at any given respective position that he's played while at Jackson State. I like his tenacity. I like his motor. I like his feet. There's everything that I like about him. Nobody had any faith in trying to acquire him. Nobody really looked for the type of player that he was meant to be. And uh, Javancy, sorry, I still have uh, technical problems because of that 30-plus mile-an-hour win, so I apologize about that. I appreciate your your persistence in calling back. Yeah, sir. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. Look, this guy is an edge rusher from the old school. He has flavor that you see from guys that have played before him, that have played before him. Not only, for you know, you could probably put Jackson State on an island all by itself because when you're talking about NFL talent and the amount of talent that has came from this program, there hasn't been a lot. There hasn't been a lot. Look, Javancy, I look at your feet, I look at your hands, I look at your motion, I look at your, your, your swim move, your power move, how you roll over, how you get through to quarterbacks to create not only sack opportunities, but to give your team a fighting chance because nobody, Jackson State, I don't know, Jackson, I, I, whenever I think of Jackson, I think of Michael. I don't think of a college called Jackson State. I'll be honest with you. As a matter of fact, when I look at your your physicality, when I look at your 82 tackles, 19 and a half tackles for loss, on top of in four sacks, last year, I think to myself, this is an NFL-level guy coming from one of the small schools. What was it like being probably one of the high-end linebackers coming to out of Jackson State to have a discussion now, and we'll go a little retroactive, now headed into the 2017 NFL Draft. You know, it's, uh, it's kind of weird at first because uh, a lot of people don't know who you are. Uh, like you said, a lot of people don't even know where school you come from. And so uh, 
they look at the names like, okay, I never heard of you, this, this, that. I haven't been on TV every Saturday uh, at the big time games. And so they actually look down on you. So you haven't been playing at uh, the big competition like the big schools. And, you know, I feel as if uh, the only difference between me and the big schools are uh, they, they are provided with more things than I am. So on the field, we the same people. We put our brother pads on the same. We put our pants on the same. And once I step on the field, I'm even better than you or just about the same as you. So I don't think no one's better than me. You know, it's kind of interesting you should say that because I've, I've said it before on the Rude Dog Show. I, I've interviewed a lot of D2 guys, a lot of D, a lot of D1, but a lot more D2. And when I, I was told by a famous linebacker, he said that it doesn't matter what school you come from. It doesn't matter what division you play in. The pads are the same. The equipment may not be as new, but it works. And I, I, I think to myself, wow, do these guys have a fighting chance? Do they even have half of a chance that guys that come from a small Division One A school have? And the answer to that is no. They have the same exact, they're on the equal plane type of things that he has done year in and year out while at Jackson State, the guys who were part of Division II schools that have about as much of an opportunity as a small Division I-A school has. Tell me about your experiences not being recognized, not being noticed, not being spoken about until the East-West Shrine game. Uh, well, you know, uh, it always is broken. Uh, coming from a small school, and a lot of, like I said, a lot of people don't know who, who you really are, but uh, just even when I was, I always get considered an underdog. Even before I went to Jackie State, I was considered an underdog. So I've been living that playing that role my whole life. It just makes me uh go hard. It makes me grind hard to let people know that when I step up, you might consider me an underdog. But in the end, you will regret that decision. And so uh, I remember going to the East West Shrine game and. Like you said, when the NFL team calls, you got to check yourself and get ready. They called me that Friday. Uh, we supposed to support that Saturday. So I was just laying down in the gym when my agent called and told me he had good news for me. Uh, and so when I got the car, I was like, I'm ready. Uh, I went and got all my stuff uh, in the next three hours and I loaded the plane and was headed down. So when I got there, I remember standing in the lobby. Uh, we had NFL interviews. Uh, all the Scouts and stuff were walking past me. They, uh, they look at my name tag. They uh, ask me how to pronounce my name. Tell me the answer. So they say from that to pick, and they keep on going. So uh, right then and there, I knew that I had to make a statement. And so we went to practice, and you know I did. Uh, there was myself. So was having fun, doing doing what I love and love what I do. So uh, the rest of it. There's so much more history to be made, though. When you look at when you look at what you did, second team FCS All American honors, those don't come easy. You just don't walk onto a small Division One A or Division Two and get these types of accolades. It doesn't happen overnight. You had fought tooth and nail, tooth and nail, to play to where. You wanted to be comfortable with your athleticism, the types of plays that you wanted to make, the type of player you wanted to be. But there's more to it than that. I've spoken dozens of times. This is episode 106, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. I've done this for four years. I've interviewed tons of talent. Tons of talent. And when I interview this, this type of talent, I say to myself, man, do they have an opportunity you have an opportunity to make more history headed into the 2017 NFL Draft. It's amazing. And what's even more amazing is that the last linebacker picked out of Jackson State was Mario Perry. Who? Does anybody know who Mario? Do you know who Mario Perry is? I don't know who Mario Perry is. Oh, you do? Yes, sir. I, yes, sir, I do. He was taken in the 1994 NFL Draft, and he was taken out of Jackson State. Now I have to ask oh, you: no. <laughs> When you did you have a chance to, to speak to Mario Perry recently? No, sir, not recently. I spoke to some of the greatest, though, like Bob uh, Brazil. Okay. I speak. I spoke to him quite often. 
Okay. So what was what was that con- what was the very first conversation like? Did you even talk about being a linebacker drafted out of one of the smallest one A schools in NCAA football? We ended up not even talk about myself or the drum. I was just admired to be in the places of Robert Brazil. Uh, all that got to say, I know we talk about Walter Payton a lot, but right on the, on the Walter Payton, you're going to hear Robert Brazil uh, for what he did in college. Uh, also, what he did when he was in the NFL, man, just to be right there in front of him, I just was blessed to have the opportunity. It's amazing what you pick up from a lot of people that you talk to that have played the game. Not only played the game at the NCAA level, but playing the game in the NFL level. It's amazing to find out that these guys had about as much opportunity as you have now getting into the NFL. But what's more interesting is that that creates almost similar to that of having a chip on your shoulder. Because now here you are playing for years at Jackson State, breaking records, All-American, 19 out tackles for loss, and that was last year. We're not talking 2015 in your junior, sophomore years. We're talking just last year. It's amazing when you look at the types of media outlets that are out there who, first of all, didn't even give Devontae an opportunity to tell his story. Well, here on the Root Dog Show, we like to get into stories because that's what makes people who they are. So, Javon, yes, tell me about your 2016 season. What do you attribute to those numbers? Because it was a phenomenal year for you. And make no mistake, there was a non-discussion surrounding who you were or where you were coming out of. Almost, almost having a silent but deadly 2016 season. Tell me about it. Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Well, you know, uh, I've been a captain since my freshman year, so my whole mindset wasn't even on my numbers. To be honest, was coming into this season. I was really just focused on uh, getting my team back to, to winning and going to the championship. So all, all I did was basically trying to get the team to be better and just continue, uh, continue to do what I usually do. So, but... Going into this season, I had a lot more motivation. I can't say that. Uh, right before my everything was going good, I had uh, just got a couple preseason accolades, uh, got preseason all American, uh, preseason all swag and all that. Then uh, right before camp, my mother, my mother uh, was facing ICU. Uh, she ended up uh, was unable to breathe and had to use a breathing machine. They put on the uh, uh, she was out to you for a while, and then when she got out to you, we found out that she was paralyzed from the neck down. Uh, so coming into the season, uh, I had to take some time off. Uh, at first, I, to be honest, thought about uh, actually giving up the game for a while just to make sure my mother and my sister were straight out uh, to take care of family. The family always come first, but my mother told me, uh, don't worry about it, kid. Just keep grinding and keep pursuing my goals, pursuing my dreams, and she knew that I wanted to be in the NFL. And so, coming back in that same year, I, every day, uh, I had my little girl's name on my left wrist and my, and my mother's name on my right wrist. And they, uh, you know, I talked to God every day, and I never know this one I'm doing it for. Uh, they asked God to put his poop on my mattress and just let me, uh, just let me do the thing that he blessed me to do. And so uh, I knew my mother and my little, my little girl was, I, they, I got to provide for them, whether it's in football or not. Uh, in the classroom, I went harder. I fit harder on the practice field. I went harder. I worked out more and more. And, you know, I did had a, they had a chip on my shoulder, but now it was a chip on my heart. I just had to make sure I got things better. How's your mom now? How's how is she doing? Is she is she going through therapy? Is she still in the hospital? What how how's your mom doing right now? Uh, she's still in the hospital. She got paralyzed from the neck down. Uh, she finally talking again. Uh, she she uh, I mean wasn't able to talk at first, so I didn't have on this little voice to see she's talking again. So, but overall, she 
still here, so that's a blessing to me. I get to talk to her, I want to get to feel, and I want to, so it's still a blessing. I bet that's hard. I, I, I couldn't imagine what it was like to not have my parents at one of the biggest opportunities to play now as an East-West Shrine game. And it was no surprise that you're there. And by the way, tell your mom I said hello next time you see her. Yeah, sir. That's got to be tough. I, I don't know what it was like. And you, you did have your supporters, though, however. Those that part of alumnus from Jackson State as well as some friends and some close family members as well. But what was it like to not have your mom there rooting for you, cheering for you during the East-West Shrine game this past January? Uh, it was kind of rough, but I had to have that, uh, used to it, uh, for the season, uh, because, uh, my mother, she was diagnosed my senior year in high school, uh, with the rare disease, death disease, pain, uh, that she was leaking this land, and, uh, she could barely walk. And so, the time the big was still gonna be paralyzed, but, uh, God had other plans, so, how, uh, First, uh, my first three years at Jackson State, she was there in every home game. Uh, even though she couldn't see me out on the field, it goes, she goes under and, and happy just to hear my name called on the intercom. So, uh, so this is the year, uh, she got to see me play one time. Uh, Jackson State had a, a, uh, special day for me at home coming. They surprised me and brought my mom to, uh, to the game and just to have a deal with, uh, get there with so hard work for me. And so for the East West Shrine game, I talked to her every night. And she just told me, remember that she just feared that, you know, uh, I have a celebration every time they can play, I can lose, and they want to lose, they want to lose my mom. It was, it was far away for which she had played. And I, I guess what, what really has me, I'm not mad about it necessarily, but it just, it just really confuses me in that you had played all those years at Jackson State outperforming people. Now, to all credit given to the guys you play with, make no doubt about it, they were absolutely fantastic. And we lost to Vancey again. But this guy had a semi okay season in, other, in some people's eyes, but Taylor, for whom still in the hospital, it probably will be for quite a while until what well, to me. This again borders on sad. But before the East West Shrine game, there was no conversation surrounding who this guy was. It's amazing. It's amazing how you can go through an entire, you know, your junior, senior, sophomore, all these years in college, and nobody knows who you are, yet you're setting numbers. You're breaking numbers. You're becoming all American. Tackles for loss, 80 few times. I mean, there's so many. It, it's it's frustrating. I'm sure it had to be frustrating for Javancy who Jones to be back here on the Rude Dog Show. Everybody can tune in, download live, iTunes, Google. Uh, you can call into the show, 216 539 9967. You can always ask Javancy a question uh, surrounding his career, what he's looking towards, how he's looking forward without worrying about the past. But that's kind of what we're talking about right now, Javancy. Thanks for joining me again. Look, we talk about the non-discussion, the non-talk. Did it bother you at all that nobody was having a conversation surrounding who Devancy Jones was and why we should get him in here for a private workout? Are you with me? I'll tell you, if I was a player, I would be... Furious. I would be absolutely furious. Furious. I would say, you know, I'm trying to do my absolute best here. I'm trying to work my best here. I'm trying to do everything I can. You know, for, forget trying. It's not a matter of impressing people. You can, you can try to impress them all you want, but if you're playing your game, if you're doing your thing, if you're doing what you have to do, then what do you think is going to happen? goes back to a quote I read the other day. It's about doing doing it for free, and at some point you're going to love it so much, people are going to hear the passion in your voice, or see the passion on the field, and want to pay you to do it. 
In this case, this is exactly what it is. Devancey Jones should be paid for his work, and certainly an NFL team will be a part of that conversation in regards to what he gets paid on. We're going to talk about projections, but I, I, I don't even want to go there. I don't want to go there. You have guys on ESPN don't want to talk about him. Uh, guys in all these different, you know, draft pools and draft leagues, and you know who's your mock draft and what's your mock, you know, draft. Why not make a mock underdog draft? That's what I'm saying. That's kind of what I'm wondering there, Devancey. Look, there was no discussion about you while you were at Jackson State University, smallest Division One school in NCAA history. Are you going to be able to? play in the 2017 NFL season, and maybe even your entire career with a chip on your shoulder. Yes, sir. Uh, I got to say the chip on my shoulder because uh, I know exactly who I want to be in and who I want to be. So, you know, either they want to chip to me or they not to chip to me. Even with all they know, like, hey, it's time to admit to me to be under the radar. And so, uh, you know, my coach already told me, uh, once you put the work in, don't be surprised from the outcome. And so, I just got there, uh, uh, I ended up falling in there still. A lot of other people won't be surprised, but I'm not. Because I sat there and I, I grinded out each and every day throughout the season, uh, after practice, before training, I put the work in, so I'm not going to be surprised by the outcome. I'm not surprised at the outcome either. I thought to myself beforehand when I looked at when I looked at your numbers, I didn't look at your film first. I, I looked at your numbers, and your numbers tell me more than your film will probably ever tell me. And I've never said it before to a player, but in all fairness, when I add on top of the list, talking to you and just listening to your humility and looking at the numbers and and going back and looking at some of your film, you are the total package. You're the package NFL teams want in a player. You can make all the sacks. You can lay people out like a bare skin rug. But with the personality, <laughs> with the personality, in the locker room, being able to exhibit the type of sportsmanship that you have as a part of who you are and what you do speaks volumes. So much so that my ears would probably be blown out because I'd be so impressed with you in the locker room if I was your cousin. Yeah, very. Uh, like I said, I've been in Texas since my first year. Uh, I've always had uh, people look up to me, and, and you know, I earned my respect on and off the field. I wasn't just a football player that that was deadly, uh, turned and then went out and did, did put up great numbers. I was a weight room junkie. Uh, I still am a weight room junkie. Uh, I just did hard training when it came down for a combine or a pro day. Uh, I've been just training, trying to be better. Never became complacent. Uh, never became satisfied with, with what I've done or what I did in the past. So I basically just been, uh, you know, grinding. And my teammates, they, they look at me and be like, okay, the band got all the accolades. Uh, he got me all the merits. He got me, uh, first in my company band. You know, and but you still work, you still pushing, you still striving to be tough. That was becoming complacent, and so they just feed off into them. Man. And I try to the people around me. I try to instill what I know into them because I know that come from a small town, come from a small school, a small city. I know that it's so hard to make it. And well, I'm from, a lot of people don't make it out where well, I'm from. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it out with a if it's football, that's a blessing, but if it's not football, I, I told my mom the other day, I told her, I said, Mom, if I don't make it to the NFL, there's no I gave it all I got. There's no I put my heart to the field and do it. And if I don't make it to the NFL, I promise you'll still have a tough first. And so, okay, but if I got it, if I got to let her know that I'm going to be successful no matter what. Let's, let's talk about where you're from. Now, I've been to Mississippi. We were talking about catfish earlier, and I like my catfish. <laughs> Macon, Mississippi. Macon. I, I have no clue where that's at. I couldn't even tell you. But the, the conference is what has me. 
Southwestern Athletic. I don't even know what that is. It sounds like a new, uh, you know, you go into the store, you find a new pair of athletic shorts or, you know, the hand ones. You ever heard of hand one? I, I, when I hear Southwestern Athletic, I think to myself, hey, man, brand new pair, you know, it's a shoe line or a clothing line or something. No, this is a conference. This is where people play. It's crazy. <laughs> think of that. Oh, we lost to Vance again. That's all right. He'll call back. I'm here. Oh, you're here. Okay, I don't know what happened there. My bad. See what happened? You call him the kettle black. You're still around. You're still here. So that's okay. good for us. Good for the listeners. Look, I'm going to try to take a commercial break here because, again, I have some relatively turbulent weather here. So give me just a moment. I'll try to ring up a, um, a commercial of some type because, you know, you have to pay the bills regardless. You can be out in the sandstorm and have to, you know, fork out $50 to somebody. Hopefully you don't get swept away in the sand or you better have a shovel with you to pick it up out of the sand. Just throwing that out there right now. But uh, look, you guys can always be a part of the show. Download the iTunes app or it's on Google. Everybody knows what Google is, right? Okay, well, check it out. Download the app. Tune in now. Lines are open. 216-539-9967. I'm Rudy Reyes from the Rude Dog Show on WBLCSports.com. And you know what? I'll be right back. This is The Sheet. It gets me all revved up. My face is now red. My ears are just freaking boiling. He's so raw. He's so raw. That's yeah, yeah, 51 touchdowns. 49, uh, 49 total yards. I know y'all are bad, but I gotta run. I know y'all are bad, but I gotta run. They're so good. Man, they win the Big Ten if they were in the Big Ten. They could be doing something vision based in front of you and reach down and grab a handful of insane goodness. I just put in two rows, I'm talking about the ball for a very good time. Wow. You guys agree on something that's one? I know it's that. You ever had a bad week? You walk outside and step in a puddle? Like, you walk outside and step in a puddle? Are you still on the curb? It's like, grabbed by a black and blood of Are it just raining on you? Not anyone else? I will tell you, before you go any further, I cannot hear Chaz in the speech. Good. You're listening to the speech, man. I don't really know what we're doing. Every Saturday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. right here on WTLZ Sports. Doug Patrick Payne with Fresh Wash. He has over 30 years of pain experience. He's interior, exterior, commercial or residential. Doug Pepper covers it all. Is your house looking up? Let's call on Doug. Doug Pepper Payne with Fresh Wash. 404 966 3361. Mention WBLZ Sports. We get a special We've Got Ball discount. That's Doug Pepper Payne with Fresh Wash. 404 966. Hello everybody, this is Blake Cole, host of Off the Wall Baseball here on WBLD Sports. If you love America's pastime, then join me every Wednesday afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern for the latest and greatest in the world of Major League Baseball. Whether it be your industrial, commercial, or residential need, Gen Service is the electrical contractor for you. The Gen Service team has the expertise, commitment, and educational years to help you solve your electrical concerns. We have you in your best interest with helpful suggestions. That's a pretty gnarly weather here. I don't know. I want to try to make it through this show because that's that's all I know how. That's all I know how to do. So my apologies in advance. Uh, look, good afternoon. This is Rudy Reyes of the Rude Dog Show at WBLZSports.com. Look, we're, we're back. Probably have about another 25 minutes of turbulent weather to deal with here, but you know, we're just going to keep chugging through. Right, Javanti? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> Very good. This is something you're not accustomed to in Jackson State. That weather out there is tough. It's rough. Sometimes you probably didn't want to play in it at all with weather and wind in your face, but you went out and did your best. And that's all anybody can ask for. Javanti, Jones. On the show, on the Rudolph Show, WBLZSports.com, at least he was on the show. It just, oh, good grief. Okay, look. This guy performed at the best of his ability. The best of his ability. You cannot put this and how I can do that and, and where I'm at or where I'm not at. No, it's not a matter of that. It's what am I doing now to change myself what am I doing now to change my successes 
to create more out of what I didn't have. Don't worry about what you didn't have. Worry about what you do have. I have to pay homage to a guy who's had to change attitudes, personalities, and that's Anthony Gilbert. Go to new-game-plan.com. Check him out. At Anthony Agent 1. He does tweet from time to time. Yes, I said he does. From time to time. Check out at Anthony Agent 1. Go to new-game-plan. He wants to change the way players look at agents one player at a time. As well as Sedekumil.us, who is the vitamin sponsor of two-time Gold Glove winner Starling Marte of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Of course, they're not having the weather that I am here in Florida. That I can assure you. And last but never least, that's johnmaleki.com. That's J-O-H-N-M-A-L-E-C-K-I.com. You can certainly change the way you want to build your wood. You want to go buy it pre-made? Okay, great. But when you look at his quality product, he's on Instagram as well, at John Malecki. He makes some great stuff. So go to johnmalecki.com. Look at all this wonderful, fabulous work. If you can dream it, he can build it at johnmalecki.com. Let's switch gears a little bit here, Javancy, since we still have you for relatively 20 minutes. Today, across my wire, I call it my wire because it's my wire. Not everybody's wire is the same line. Not everybody's wire like I am either, so you can probably <laughs> chalk it up to reality. No one's wired like you, that's for sure. No doubt about that one. The motor you have, I'm sure uh, foreign car makers would look for a motor that you have. Yeah, but let's switch gears here. Trent Richardson... In the news, had some run-ins. He's been arrested before. Seems to be going around in the NFL offseason. Darrell Revis possibly headed to Rikers Island. No, I'm kidding. No, he's not headed to Rikers. But he's on an island of his own now. He really is. Four charges. Four separate charges. One, two, three. Four charges against him. Cell phone, video was involved. Clearly, he tried to get it back. I don't know what the NFL offseason holds for a lot of these guys, but they need to stay out of trouble. Javancy doesn't get into trouble. Javancy, there's glitz and glamour associated with a guy of your caliber heading into the 2017 NFL draft to be picked up by an NFL team, and I can put that on my calendar and say, I'm rooting for Javancy to go because he will. Not because I think he will. No, he will. There's no doubt about it. But you hear about all these off-field issues, off-field problems, the arrest for battery, domestic violence, and it's it's rampant in the NFL. How would you keep yourself away? How would you stray away from the problems and trouble that causes most NFL, not most NFL athletes, but there are a majority of them that consistently get into trouble? And that includes coaches as well. Yeah, so well, over these last couple of years, uh, since you have not been the out in out in and no people keep the track of what I do, uh, I learned to, to put myself in the right situation. Uh there's some situations you you can't put yourself in and and then when you are put into those situations, you gotta think about uh the outcome. You just can't react to 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 that moment. But in the spare of the moment, moment you may do anything. And the stupidest decisions are made within that little split second. So you got to take a deep breath and you just got to, uh, you got to figure out the, like I said, you got to think about the outcome though. What, if you do get to see me and what? Well, I see this route, the better route. Then I'm trying to have a great outcome. So, that's all I think about it. I, I, mean, I put everything in the bad hand and I try to make sure I do everything the right way. I'll tell you, it's sad to see and hear about all these guys that seem to follow the wrong path, but I think that you're on, that you've been on the right path. I was watching yesterday. Jerome Bettis. Today, yesterday was his, was his birthday, by the way, so. And tomorrow, Le'Veon Bell's birthday. A couple days apart, both running backs, both played. One played for the Steelers, one currently plays for the Steelers, or at least for the moment he does. But when I talk about trouble, how, how would you... I'll give you a scenario. Guys come up to you and say, hey man, 
let's go out, let's go grab a drink, let's go to the bar, what have you. You go, just to go. Now, their mindset could be one of two ways. Either he's going to participate, or he's not going to participate. Clearly, they already have plans involving you. If you've seen them get into a negative situation, but because you're there, you're with them, you're in their company, how would you excuse yourself from being in their company knowing that they're going to get in trouble in the long run? How would you handle that? With me, I'm straightforward. Um, I would tell them that the, the, if the intermediate would be the kind of how that I need to know that I can get to their heads, uh, I can get to them. That this is not the right decision, and I had to make the right decision for me. And the right decision for me, right there, is just disregard who I'm on with. Leave the situation, leave the prison that I was in, uh, get away from it as far as I can, and make sure that, you know, my name can come back up here. Yeah, I make sure somebody's seen me leave, somebody's seen that, uh, that I, I had nothing to do with the situation at hand. Well, the reason why I ask is because NFL teams will grill you. They will put you under a, a heat lamp in a room with a chair turned around and grilling you. They're going to ask you a lot worse questions than this. They're going to try to break you down. So you got to be prepared, have to be ready. I think you're ready. I think you're ready to not only get to the next level, but excel in the next level as well. Look, you were playing at Jackson State to the best of your ability and excelling at a very fast rate. Now that NFL teams have recognized that you exist, and I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to miss words here. It is what it is. How has life changed for you, knowing that NFL teams are basically blowing up your agent's telephone, waiting to get you in for a workout? Yeah, first of all, it's been good to know. You just know that something. Are they waiting? Are, are are they waiting for you to fly into their location? I think so. I think there are people looking for Javancy, and that, that goes along with, with with the Steelers who are looking for him as well. You have lots of other teams, maybe even the New England Patriots. Defensively, they're losing a lot of guys. But for them, yeah, that doesn't really. They're out there, and, and you know who you are. I clearly don't have to tell you. Your game is your game, and my game is my game. My game's here on the RudockShow.com on WBLZ Sports. That's just the way it is. And hopefully, we'll get Javanti back here because I certainly want to talk to him about some more things. Because clearly, what you look at here is the kind of guy that he is, the type of personality he has, the attitude. The attitude that Javancy Jones has is bar none. He just wants to play. It doesn't matter who it's for. It doesn't matter how long it's for because I guarantee if he signs a short a three-year rookie contract with an NFL team that if he wants to leave after those three years and there's better opportunity for him, and I don't mean financially, I mean personally, be close to his mom, he's going to take it. That's his mom. He only has one. So why not take the opportunity if it presents itself? I believe it will. Javancy, look, have you realized that you're going to get drafted? Has the thought occurred to you? Has it even changed your mindset whatsoever, knowing that you're going to get drafted in this year's draft? If the end is not yet, uh, I feel, uh, I know people probably all the time about me being drafted my age and my partner. And, you know, in my head, I'm like, uh, I always think about the worst case scenario. You know, I'm still thinking about I'm the underdog. Uh, I might have to go through a uh, real big thing. You never know where my hand is. So I still want to have that underdog mentality. I still want to go through every day training like, okay, I got to get better so somebody at least grab me. Uh, I can be the last person in the show. I'm just being ready to get better mentality. Work, 
All you know is what you're doing, and that's what you're doing because that's what you know how to do. And getting drafted by an NFL team isn't something that probably occurs to most people. Most guys aren't going to get drafted. A lot of guys from Division II schools, there's only a 20% chance that they'll make it individual. And it's kind of interesting. And look, when I was talking about the draft class, there isn't a lot of interior linemen such as yourself, and you can put yourself in the middle. You put yourself at the end at the defensive end position, and you've been doing absolutely fantastic and basically blowing the doors off of not only in the East-West Shrine game, but before that, playing in your respective school. You had so many, you were so versatile. So versatile. You can wreak havoc when you want to. You can get pressure when you want to. You have the power moves when you need to. And they work for you. And they work for other people looking around you. I'd, I had stated to, uh, to your agent, I said, look, I said, this guy's going to be at least a third rounder. At least. Minimum. Because guys want the upper motor skilled class players that have good attitudes, good personalities, strong work ethics, and Devancey Jones is the package. He's a guy who can get it done. Coaches, scouts, I'm not telling you something you don't already know. Because if you don't know now, you will never know. Because you could be missing Devancey Jones, one of the best pass rushers, defensive end players in your defensive system. If you want to pass him up, that's not a problem. Send him up to the next guy. Will the Steelers grab him? Maybe. Will the Patriots grab him? Maybe. But if you sleep on him, somebody else won't because they're already looking. So what types of teams have been looking for you right now during your time as the uh, as you wait for the 2017 NFL draft? Uh, well, I was talking to the Buccaneers, the Ravens, uh, the Dick, the Cowboys, the Seahawks. Uh, I was talking to a couple teams, but uh, no one really knows exactly where they want me to play at. A lot of them think you know the line about the uh, from the outside, from the end, you know. But uh, one thing about it, I'm, I'm very versatile, and and I got easy. Uh, I had four different VPs in four years. I played in a four-two-five, a three-four, a four-three, and a three-three-five. I played every position from the DN to the one technique, the no, the three technique, the inside linebacker, the outside linebacker. Uh, I played it all. And so no matter what thing you got me, uh, no matter what team get the opportunity at, they do know that they they just don't have a, a little simple uh person that can only play the year. They don't have nobody that can play the line. They have somebody that uh if anybody goes down within that first that first seven, I'm, I'm able to play, I'm able to step into it. And also uh with such things, I think five and six of such things were playing such things so, you know, uh they're not just getting up. Uh, 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 one, uh, you know, that a uh, player that owner say one position. I play most of the teams and I, I, I can help the team out in, in numerous ways. Like I said, Devancey Jones, versatile, strong, well liked, well versed, and certainly somebody that an NFL team would want not only on the field. but as a part of their system because he, he gives back. Devancey, hey, thank you for hanging in there with all the technical problems I've had here today on the show, which I'm not accustomed to, uh, but I do appreciate you hanging in there and, uh, and calling back into the show. So thank you. Yeah, so anytime. <laughs> I understand the thing is not going right. You can keep doing something this way. That's right. It's not the problems themselves. Is how you handle them. That's how it is. Javancy Jones knows what that's all about. Javancy, hey, thanks, man. It's been a treat. I appreciate having you on. Yeah, sir. Thanks, man. Absolutely. <laughs> thanks, man. Hey, if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. Okay, I'll be happy to do that. Yeah, sir. Thanks. No problem. Thank you very much. We'll be in touch soon. Thank you. Have a great day. Uh, I'll be you as well. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, Javancy Jones, the persistent <laughs> Javancy Jones, considering I have nothing but problems here with connectivity, I do have a, uh, 
a relatively brutal storm uh, here in Southern California, so I apologize about that, but I can't do anything about that. I can only control what I can control here on the Rude Dog Show. But that is it for me. I thank everybody for listening, tuning in. Make sure you keep the app downloaded. WBLZsports.com has everything sports related. Every ball, no matter how big it is, they have the balls. And I'm Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show at WBLZsports.com. Stay tuned tomorrow. This episode will be posted on the RudeDogShow.com as well as on SoundCloud. And we'll be posted on Twitter as well. You'll see it pinned in on the top of my page. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Rudy Reyes of the Rude Dog Show at WBLZsports.com. We'll see you tomorrow with Tunch Oak and Damian Williams talking about Fortune Steel's seven proven techniques by the Pittsburgh Steelers.